Hello everybody, Stephen here with Cardboard Coalition. And today we figured we'd bring you a how to play of Century Golem Edition, An Endless World. So as you can see, we have uh, our game set up here. Let's see if we can put this up in shot. We don't got lots of room here. There we go, nice. So we have a game set up here for two players. This game is um, a game that you can play with two to four players, but I have it set up right now for two players and I'll explain some of the differences involved in that. Now, Century Golem Edition, An Endless World, or all the Century um, games, because these are based off the original Century games, and all the Golem Edition games, they're all uh, set collection games, right? By Plan B Games. And so, to set up this game, first you want to put down the player board, and there's instructions. You have a whole whole bunch of nice, easy to read. Well, it's art, easy to read instructions that you can go through. But to set up the board, you take A, B, and C, and they always go in that order, that reverse kind of L order. So A, B, and C, and then you have um, D, E, F, three of them, and you shuffle them and you pick which one, and you make sure you have the um, side one up. There's a side two and that's for mixing the other editions of Golem Century. This is the third, not edition, the third expansion, the third uh, volume. Let's go with volume. This is the third volume and they can all be mixed together. So first you put up ABC, then you put down the point cards. I believe they're called point cards. Yeah, they're point cards. So you shuffle them and then you put down certain point cards. Now at the point cards, if you're playing a two player, you wanna take out certain cards. And the instructions tell you all this stuff, but I'll go over it really quick. So you wanna take out all um, cards that would have a little star in it in this, down in this corner down here. You would also take out all cards that have three plus on it and equals four, which means if you're playing a three player game or more, you add those cards. If you're playing a four player game, you add those cards. And then also the star cards is when you're mixing the games because you can mix the different Golem editions together to play. Then next you put down, um, I think these are, now I got to remember, the bonus cards, right? The bonus point tokens, you put them down. And I might have mixed up the order of this. But you have 17 of these, you shuffle them up. Also with these, it says the same thing. There's a, there's a, um, Roman numeral one and Roman numeral three, it says take those out, shuffle up the 17 remaining, and then you place them underneath, face up, and underneath each of these stacks, it shows you what, um, how many you put there. So four, three, two, 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 but it shows you so you don't have to worry too much about it. Once that's done, then you put down the exploration tiles. These are exploration tiles. And what they do is you can see is they cover up the, um, action of that that specific area on the board so you put all those down and in a um, two to three player game you cover these two spots and we'll talk about how it works but it, it tells you right here on the board two to three two to three so you go ahead and put all those down if you have a four player game you obviously don't put those two down all right then next now i got to glance over for the order because i gotta remember what i'm doing um Next, 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 you put down, um, they did the exploration. Well, they say player boards. I actually put these down and these are your um, stones, right? So your crystals, what they call them. And you put them in ascending order. Yellow's the lowest value, green's the next highest, blue the next highest, and magenta, pink or purple, however you wanna look at, magenta is your highest value stone. So you put those out. Then you put down your player boards and each player picks a color that they want. So we have brown over here and we have purple or we can go with magenta if we wanna keep going with that over here. Now, one of the things I kinda of skip, let me go back and I don't think it's showing in the video so I'm gonna to have to try to be very gentle here. One player board has this blue stone on it. That's how you figure out who the first player is. So you take them, you shuffle them up, and you randomly pass them out. And whoever has the blue stone is your first player, right? So once you have your player boards for each player, 
Then you give each player the color meeple they want to have. Then you pass out stones. First player gets three. Second player gets four. If I remember right, third player gets four. And the fourth player gets three, if I remember right. So there's the basic setup. Now you're probably wondering, how do you win this game? How do you play this game? So to win Century Golem Edition and Endless World, you have to have the most points. That's how you end. But what gets you to the point counting process is, or you call it the end game mechanic. The thing that happens that starts the, the final phase of the game. And so for this particular game, the end game mechanic is when someone has eight of these point cards up here. So once someone has eight point cards, doesn't matter how many points are on them or anything. Once they have eight, game over. Well, not game over. Once they have eight, everybody else gets to finish their turn, and then you count points. And then whoever has the highest points wins the game. So now the next logical question is, how do I get those um, point cards? And let's just go ahead and grab one of these. We'll kind of look at it. So we have some things going on with the point cards that are pretty important. The cost of the card is down here. So this one costs two green stones and one magenta. The value of this card is right here. It's worth six points. So this is a pretty high value card. Then up here, um, we'll just call it set. You know, the, the set signifier. I'm sure there's a name for it. Now I've completely blanked. But this one has a wing. And then this gives you an action when you have the card. Some cards have an instant action like this. This one, what it's saying is you can pick up any exploration token on the board for free. And we'll talk about how that would help you. So you have the cost, the value, the, the points you get at the end of the game. You have the set marker, right? And this is because there's ways to get extra points based on sets gathered. And then you have the action that you get with this card. So if we look right here, we have another one and I know the angle, I can't get my camera up high enough to show you everything at once. But this one, we have two greens. Well, this one's exactly the same. Two green stones and a magenta. It's worth four points at the end. It's a cog, right, is the, the symbol, right? And it's two meeples, right? You get two meeples. So if you notice down here with the setup, you have X amount of meeples. For a two-player, you have seven. You start with seven meeples with a... Um, three to four player, you have six meeples, and then you have extra meeples right here. These are meeples that you can gain and add to your setup. We also, let's see if I can find one from this deck. There we go, that's exactly what I'm looking for. So here's another one, of course I flip it over and it's two green and a magenta, Make, makes it awesome. It's worth five points. You have a lightning bolt symbol, right? Or a set marker. And this one says anywhere where there's this symbol, so it's a mushroom, you, it costs one less worker to do that action. So if you look down here, and I know it's kind of hard for you guys to see, oh, I wish I would have had the extras out, there are symbols. So a book and a mushroom and a raindrop and a cloud. I think this is a, is a scale. What this means is if I were to go to this spot and I had this card in my collection, I would pay one less meeple. So it says three, I would pay one less. So that's how the point cards work. They give you points. Um, they also give you uh, emblems or, or, you know, these little pictures here so you can set up your collection and it gives you a bonus thing. So this one has one meeple. Oh, look, that's three greens. All right. So the next thing that we have on here, those are your point cards, are your bonus card, are your bonus tiles, right? And so this is where the symbols come in. I, I guess I got to pull one of these cards to keep showing you guys a symbol. So as you see right here, this one has a lightning bolt and a cog. And what it's saying is at the end of the game, for every lightning bolt and cog combination you have, you get an extra three points. This one, as you see, has the wing. And what it's saying is for every wing, you get an extra two points. And over here, that's just an extra three points at the end of the game. All right. So the next thing you might be asking is, well, Stephen, how do we get these um, bonus tiles and um, point cards? And the way you do that is in a worker replacement fashion or worker placement in this case right now, 
fashion. And so if you look down here, and I know it's probably hard to see, you have a three, a two, a one, a one. And what that means is if the first player wanted something here, they would put down their little meeples, right? They would set them down right there. They would either pay the cost for the card, but because they don't have the right amount of stones, they can also just take a tile from here. So let's say they're like, oh, this is a good one. This is straight three points. I'm gonna take those three points and I wanna put them down on my player board. Now there's some things to keep in mind with these player boards. And so I gotta be careful again one more time. Ooh-wee, ooh-wee, oh, Mr. Macy's. All right, so here we go. So you could only have three bonus tiles, right? You can only have three, and once you have three, you can't swap them out and trade them. You could only have 10 stones at the end of your turn, right? You can only have 10 stones on this card at the end of your turn. And it can be any color. It could be yellow, it could be green, it could be blue, it could be magenta, but you can only have 10. But you could only have three bonus tiles on your card. And you could never swap out the bonus tiles. Now the stones, you can swap them and convert them. It doesn't matter, you only have 10. So there's the bonus tile. You put down your meeples, you get the bonus tile. Now, if you had enough gems or the proper color, you could get the bonus tile and you can um, get the, the um, point card. Now, when there's two stacks of bonus tiles, like you have here and here, you could pick any one of the bonus tiles showing. Same here, any one of the bonus tiles showing. Now, you might be saying, well, we start with yellow stones. How do we get green and blue and magenta? Well, good sirs, ladies, and others, you convert. It's about conversion. So if you look down here, you have some spots where you can just, just get a stone. So two workers here, you get a blue stone. Three workers here, you get a magenta stone. One worker, green, one green, um, and one worker, two yellow. So you have that. But then you can also convert, as you see down here. Now, this symbol means when you see grays, that means any color can move up one. So if you have a yellow, you can exchange it for a green. If you have a green, you can exchange it for a blue, blue for magenta. Doesn't matter. And you can do a yellow to a green and a blue to magenta. It just means that you could take two of your crystals, I keep calling them stones, two of your crystals and convert them up one. You can move them up one. Then you also have ones down here where you can exchange one magenta for three green or one green for three yellow. Two yellow and a green for two blue, three yellow for one magenta. You guys get it, right? So you could do some conversions. Now the other thing you can do, and this is kind of a mix of things, is you can explore. And how you explore, let's go ahead and take, uh, we'll, we'll go with the, the purple player two this time. And we're to explore, all you do is you place that many meeples. So we're gonna place two meeples, right? and we're gonna explore. What that means is we get this exploration tile. This one gives us one blue, one green stone. So we would get that. And then we instantly can do whatever is underneath. This was a bad choice for me to flip over and I should have known that. But I would also get yellow, three yellow um, crystals. So by going there with two meeples, I would get a blue crystal, a green crystal, and three yellow crystals. Pretty good score, right? So let's look at another one so we have a, I can do some better explanation. So let's go to there. You get this, and what you do is I instantly get three points at the end of the game, kind of like the bonus tile there. So I take that exploration tile, set it off to the side, and what I reveal is a conversion. This time you can convert three crystals, and it can be any crystal up one level. So yellow to green, green to blue, blue to magenta. So that allows me to do that. And that's the same with all these. But once you open an area, anybody can go to that area now. Anybody can use this um, action. So now, let's say, let's go back here. Where do you do a little rewind, rewind? Now nah, we got enough people to kind of leave it that way. So let's say that um, player one decided they wanted a blue crystal. So they put two meeples down. They took their blue crystal. They said, thank you very much. Well, player two desperately needs that crystal. What they can do is they can match the number of meeples there and add one. So they can go, okay, I need a blue. I'm going to put two 
to match yours plus one three, the meeples that were there go back to the original player's meeple stack, and then that player can do whatever's there. They can get a stone, they can convert, whatever is in that area. And this works up here too. Um, if they want the other tile or they really want to get that card right away, they can do that. Now, that is how you get your stones. That's how you kind of collect up things. Now, how the game order goes is you work, which means you put down your meeples, right? And it goes back and forth. So player one puts down their meeple somewhere. Player two goes, player one goes, player two goes. There's going to be a point. Let's go like this. Um, there's going to be a point where you have no meeples left. So let's say here, we'll just kind of spread them out for, for sake of the game. And we'll put three up here and we can put one right here. So both players, and it's not always even, sometimes one player runs out of meeples or another player does, you might run out of meeples. And so what you do at that point is you rest. And that means you don't do anything on that turn. You just collect up all your meeples. You rest. You're like, ah, oh, I'm going to take a quick rest. I'm going to kick my feet up, maybe kick my boots off. Hopefully don't die with those boots off, but kick them up. Kick them off, right? And then you collect up all your workers. Sorry, I hear my air conditioner kicking on again. I apologize. I thought I turned it off. All right. So to rest, you, you could take all your workers away. You don't have to have zero workers to rest. Right, you can have, let's say there's three workers and two, but you know there's a spot where you need three workers. You can basically skip a turn to rest and get your workers back. So how the turn order goes is first player, second player, third, fourth, depending on how many in this game setup would be first player, second player. And then you either place meeples, you do the action that's in that area. If you're exploring, you take that first tile and then you do those actions. As you can see on some of these tiles, they give you symbols. That's to make those combinations for the end scoring. If you've picked up certain bonus tiles, you also have ones that give you more meeples. So that's plus one meeple. It means you get an extra worker for yourself. So you work or you rest, right? You pick up stones, you convert stones right here, you explore to get enough stones to buy cards. Once you get eight cards, someone gets eight cards, then we hit that end game mechanic that I talked about in the beginning, and then everybody gets their turn, and then we count points. Now, one of the things that worried me is if someone has eight cards, they're obviously gonna win. Um, when Resmon and I played that, doesn't necessarily work that way. Someone might get the eighth card, but they have a lot of low cards. There's some threes too. Another person might have a whole bunch of high cards and some good bonuses going on. So they have a chance to collect up one last time and then they do the count. So that is basically how you play Century, Golem Edition, and Endless World. I hope you guys enjoyed. I'm Steven with Cardboard Coalition. And as usual, help us grow this coalition by liking, commenting, subscribing, and hitting the bell notification so you can know when we put out a new video. But other than that, have a good day. Bye.